One of my previous projects was a prioritising mechanical multiplexer. This had three outputs and one main motor to drive it. The main drive motor slid up and down so it could drive any of the outputs, and this took place via worm gears so they weren't easy to back drive and they'd stay in place once they were set. I used an Arduino to control this which read three analogue pots. The code running on the Arduino would move the motor to try and match the output with the inputs. I had various logic built into this so that it would prioritise the largest difference between input and output on each channel. However, this meant that I would cycle through each of the outputs, making each one a tiny bit smaller, until another one had a larger difference between the input and output, which wasn't very efficient. So I added some logic so it would finish controlling the current output it was working on before moving on, and also it wouldn't move on if the current output was constantly changing. This worked pretty well and would allow one big powerful motor to control several outputs, and that could be many more than three if we wished. The only thing it couldn't do was drive multiple outputs at the same time. I then moved on and made a continually variable transmission and clutch system which used a ball to convey rotary motion from one wheel to another. As the ball tilts, a varying radius of the ball will make contact with either wheel, which changes the ratio of the reduction. And in fact we can gear up or gear down depending on the position of the ball. It also has a dead spot in the middle so the output is not driven, and we can tilt the ball the other way to go in reverse. I used this to make a two wheel differential drive robot with one ball transmission driving each wheel from a central motor. Servos are tilting the balls so this made the whole thing radio controlled. I've been thinking about these projects for a while and now I'm going to attempt to make a simple robot arm that uses this system to drive all of its joints from one main motor. Something similar has been done before in the 80s by Tomy, who made a toy called Armatron. This used one main motor which ran continually and a series of complicated clutches driven by the control sticks to drive all of the outputs. My version is going to be a bit larger and chunkier, but it'll have three continuously variable transmissions so we can speed control the outputs. This should allow us to run inverse kinematics on the robot which allows the end effector to move in straight lines along a path, interpolating the start and end positions over time. Simple inverse kinematics is something I've covered a few times in multiple projects including Robot Dogs, and my simple robot arm project. But all of these projects had one motor per joint, the new project is going to be quite experimental and probably not very practical, but we'll see how it works out. The plan is to have three continually variable transmissions just like those in my previous two wheel robot. This time though each one is going to drive a worm gear which will allow the axes of the robot to stay locked in place when they're stationary. One output will drive the entire mechanism around on a turntable to make the waist of the robot, and that will leave two outputs which will eventually drive the shoulder and elbow of the robot via differential drive system. I work through working out how all of the various components will be mounted, which leaves us with a central drive shaft driving three balls, each driving an intermediate output wheel with a worm drive attached. One of these drives a large gear ring underneath the platform. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The main base of the robot's going to rotate round on a lazy Susan bearing which has two aluminium rings and ball bearings in between. So I've printed a base that's going to screw onto that and that's got some bearings to mount everything on. Fitted to the outside part is my ring gear printed in three parts that's going to make it drive all the way around. So that's going to run on a spur gear mounted in that bearing and I've also put some tabs in as well as bolting it to the ring just to hold everything aligned. I've used some washers as spacers just to hold that ring off the Lazy Susan so it doesn't rub on the inner ring and there's clearance so everything runs freely. I'm using the existing cycloidal drive reducer which was my second prototype to run this and that's the one that was previously running the previous CBT. So I've got a thing that bolts on the top here and that's going to be the main output. So that's bolted on to the bolts that run all the way through the cycloidal drive. I've printed a TPU tie for it as we had before, this one's got teeth on though rather than being smooth, 
so that should just stretch and fit onto that pulley. The motor's mounted on a bracket which has a hole in the side there so I can just slip it in and screw it on and that's mounted to another plate so the whole thing can be mounted on the turntable and of course the motor and the whole mechanism is going to rotate round with the base of the arm. That main drive shaft is going to continue throughout the whole mechanism so I've put an extension on there with another output wheel. And you'll notice that I've used blue tape so that I can glue this on and that means that I can probably break it out later and reposition it if I need to recenter it or adjust the length. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, I've got a bearing mounted on a bracket there that's going to support that drive shaft and I've also 3D printed a tolerance hub that goes in the middle so it fits the bearing tight and it also fits the drive shaft nice and tight. There's one more extension to the main drive shaft with another output wheel on it and all of that is mounted on these bearings on brackets. So we've got one in the middle there that's going to hold everything on centre. And all the components mounted on the top are mounted from the bottom with screws in countersunk holes and that's why there's so many holes there. So we'll stick on that last bearing that's going to hold the end of the shaft and that should give us the complete assembly with the motor running that drive shaft all through the middle of the mechanism. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality, low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB ship worldwide, they have fast build time so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The JLC store also sells PCB coupons and offers free PCB designs and 3D designs. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. So I fitted the spur gear in the bottom of this which runs on that big ring gear and that is driving another gear which is going to run on a worm gear. So that's a very slanted looking spur gear. And you can see that runs on the bottom there so the two are linked together and basically this is mounted on a piece of M8 studding with two nuts done up on each other and the two nuts are fitted into a hex cutout in the top of that spur gear and that's why it doesn't rotate freely and everything should be done up nice and tight. So now we just need to fit the intermediate worm gear so that fits into a bearing on that bracket and it runs onto the gear we've got there to make the whole thing rotate around. So now you can see the worm teeth aligning with that slanted spur gear so that will rotate round once we fitted the ball. And the ball fits onto another bracket which also holds the other end of that worm gear with its rubber tyre on. That's just screwed on from the bottom as the other parts are. All of the gears in here are slightly loose so there's not too much friction. That does mean there's some backlash but it's not too bad. And as we rotate that big wheel we can see it driving the worm gear, driving the spur gear and driving the whole thing around. So now we need to link the two red wheels with the ball clutch. And this is basically a ball that rotates in one axis and it has another axis which is vertical perpendicular to the first axis so it can rotate where it needs to. And these are two TPU hemispheres basically the same as last time with a rigid core with a bearing fitted and two of those fit face to face to make up the whole ball. That vertical rotation is on two bearings above and below and it will of course rotate at around 60 degrees in each direction so we can drive between the two wheels. You'll have to excuse the mashup of colours in this project, I've taken the two previous balls from the previous CBT robot and of course we've got two more worm gears as well. And of course those balls fit in on another vertical axis on each end to link the two drive wheels with the two worm gears. And again those all run the same and they run about 60 degrees either way. Now there is some flex in this whole thing which isn't very good because I really need the tolerances to be quite tight and of course that means the ball won't always run on the tyres. So I've made a lid that fits on there and it pops over the bolts and then it screws onto the top. We still do have some issues with flex though so I probably need to design that motor bracket again so it actually attaches to the top and the same with the other vertical brackets that support that drive shaft just to get rid of that flex. 
But for now, it's good for some testing, so I've basically powered the motor up and I've put bits of blue tape on those two wheels that run the worm gears. So you can see, as I tilt the balls, we can speed up and slow down the output based on the angle of the ball. And if I tilt it the other way, they go into reverse. And that, of course, is true for both ends. And these two, of course, are going to drive the robot arm, shoulder and elbow for a differential drive system, which I'm going to build in the future. But for now, you can see we can vary the speed and vary the direction, and we've got an off position in the middle. Those are going to drive two vertical axes, and I've already got the bearing mounts in the lid there, and that's coming up next time. The third one, of course, if I clutch it, will actually go and drive the whole base around in either direction, and again, I can vary the speed and I can vary the direction. And of course, it's locked in the middle with that worm gear. So when it's in the central dead spot position, it doesn't drive the worm gear and the whole mechanism can't be back driven. So I'm pretty happy of how that's turned out so far. You'll notice the motor is wobbling as it runs and that's because the shaft isn't perfectly on centre and it's glued into the hub there on the output. So I probably could benefit from a TPU section or something else flexible on that long grey shaft so I'll probably change that next time. As before, those balls are going to be driven in their vertical axis to control speed and direction by servos. So I've got three servo mounts there for some jumbo sized servos, which are the same ones I used in the previous CBT robot. So I'm pretty happy with how that's going so far. It's going to be quite an interesting project, especially when we get onto the control side of it. We can, of course, control speed and direction for each of the axes. So that means we should be able to run PID against them. And then we should be able to run inverse kinematics and interpolation, just like the other robot arms and the robot dog legs. So next time I'm going to be building up and building the shoulder and the elbow axis, which are going to come from these two vertical shafts that will be driven off the two spare worm gears. So don't forget to check back next time to see what happens there and subscribe and like the video if you like it. I will be publishing this eventually as open source, but I'm going to wait till I've actually got all of the issues sorted before I do that because it's quite a lot of printing. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. All right, that's all for now.